coffee be made into wine? Let's find out. For this, I decided to make two different batches, one with regular coffee, and for this I used Taylor's Christmas blend, and one with decaffeinated coffee, which I used Taylor's decaf. I wasn't sure what effect caffeine might have on the brewing after the last video that I did, so I thought I'd play it safe. In order to make the coffee, I used a cold brew method. This was mostly due to the quantity required and ease. Also, cold brew coffee tastes a million times better than hot coffee when you let it go cold. Supposedly, as well, brewing coffee this way extracts fewer tannins from the coffee, making it less bitter. So I have here a couple of demijohns, each holding one gallon. So to each of these, I added one bag of coffee, and then I filled it up with water, leaving a large gap at the top and then left it in a cool place for 24 hours. Note, after 24 hours, this cold brew coffee was still quite a bit weak. I would recommend using two bags instead of one, making it two bags per gallon. After that 24 hour period, I actually added a second bag of coffee to each of the demijohns and then left it for a further 24 hours. After 24 hours, the cold brew coffee is done, or in my case, 48 hours. After this, I strained the mixture out through a straining bag into another clean and sterile demijohn. In order to add the sugar, I decided to make a sugar syrup by heating up equal parts sugar and water. I then let this cool and then added it to the mix and stirred well. At this stage I took a hydrometer reader as well, as you can see on screen. Once the temperature had cooled to around 20 to 25 degrees, I added a teaspoon of wine yeast and let it settle on top. I then simply left the mixture in a warm location and allowed it to ferment. To my amazement, it actually worked in both cases. I did not see any major differences between the speed of fermentation between either of them. A couple of weeks later, and the end result, the end hydrometer readings are on screen now, and after some calculation, the alcohol percentage is, for the decaf batch, it was around 12.08%, and for the regular batch, it was 12.6%. At this stage, I added some stabilizer to help end the fermentation, and I let the mixture sit for a few more days just to let sediment settle to the bottom. Ideally, I would leave it at this stage for a few months even to let the sediment properly settle, but who has that kind of time? After this, all that's left to do is to siphon the mixture into bottles. I actually siphoned the mixture through a coffee filter just to catch any loose strains that made it through the coffee bag. So in order to seal the wine bottles, I bought a set of corks. Now. It turns out you need a specific bit of equipment called a wine corker to help put the corks into the bottles. I tried various different methods to try and get the corks in normally. I was only able to get the corks into a couple of the bottles. And instead I used these plastic topped corks for the rest of the bottles. A corker has now been ordered for my next batch. So what is coffee wine like? I can imagine it being the sort of thing you would see in a very hipster coffee shop and it would be labelled as like artisanal coffee wine and it would be like £20 a glass but no, in actual fact it's actually like if you mix coffee with wine surprisingly enough. The decaf version is actually slightly better tasting than the regular version. This could be due to the way that caffeine you know, ferments with time, I'm not sure but both batches are okay and I could see both being used as a substitute for something like Kahlua or Tia Maria in a cocktail. On the brewability scale, with 0 being don't even try, to 10 being the best thing you've ever tasted, I'll put this around a 5 out of 10. Half marks for effort. Thank you all for watching, if you have any ideas for what I should try and brew next, then let me know in the comments.